Let's say you want to cast Fire Rain. Fire Rain. But as we can see, if I cast Fire Rain here, I'm only going to get three of these opponents, and not these two. So what I should cast is Fire Storm, which is exactly the same spell, except it covers everyone instead of just a specific area. Observe. Nice work. James, 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 James. Here we are back at the Goblin Battle. The strategy I used in the last game was to throw strong fire well, which is which is good stuff. You can hit. As you can see, in this particular positioning, I can hit about seven goblins at once with that fire oil. That's great. That's efficient. But what I should do is Firestorm. Firestorm is not an area of effect spell. It attacks all enemies. So it's, it's like fire rain, except everywhere. So it's even more powerful than that amulet that just hard has on it. Let me show you that. This amulet here. Again, limited to seven opponents based on where they're standing. But with fire score, I can potentially hit more of them. Let's see what I can do. Here I will demonstrate the Circle of Madness. We have five opponents in the countryside, including two archers. We don't want them to attack us. And this is the Circle of Madness, which is an area effect of Taint of Madness. If we look at Taint of Madness, we'll see... Does not... This does not sound like a very great spell, because you could still be attacked. It does not sound like a good deal. Why, why wouldn't you prefer a spell that actually did damage, rather than something that might do nothing at all? Let's try the Circle of Madness. It's in there nicely. Those guys are confused. Much as playing. And James will put some grease on his bow. So this bandit is just walking in this direction. I don't know what he's doing. Solon will throw some oil because that's just the way he he works. Jishara. Oh, I don't know. We've got another spell here. Swallow Strength. Which decreases the enemy's strength by half. Just reduces the amount of damage they can do. By foes and feeble is the same thing for all of the enemies. But we can try that out. For some reason, only three enemies took that spell. And this guy that looks like a jester is just walking in some random direction. Pretty cool, huh? These guys are confused. They do not know who to attack or what they are doing. Uh, I figured out why James is having such a problem with bow. He's got no bow skill. I did manage to equip him with an enchanted longbow, but it's still not doing much. Oh, check this out. Oh, I thought he was going to attack his teammate. 
Here's the second Ismali battle in the countryside. We opened with James using his enchanted longbow to kill one of them in the first turn. It's still the first turn. But then the other Ismalis walked up to the party and started swinging their daggers. Solon cast Curse onto the enemies, which just, if you look at the spell, it just gives the enemy worse odds in battle, less defense, and more likelihood of getting hit, that kind of thing. And now, Jashara has a chance to contribute. So what I'm going to do is, if you have an Amulet of Domination, you get to cast Enslave the Will once per turn, which essentially puts that enemy on your team. Hammer of Will does the same thing for a lot of enemies in an area, as many as you can pack into an area. So let's try Hammer of Will. This is going to be so much fun. Just hard as well. Ow! Just horror. Let's see if Gandark can pull it off. Oh, cool. Yeah, you teach that as Molly a lesson. Is Molly? The great thing is no one's poisoned. They didn't actually manage to do that to us. Now James is just gonna sit back and wait. Let them kill themselves. The poison will probably do it. Good job, Gandark. You saved the day. This is probably not going to... Well, as the spell says, it lasts three to nine turns. James, can you go somewhere so we're not standing next to these guys if they awaken? Thank you, James. I love seeing them attack each other. That's hilarious. Yeah, damage that is Molly's arm. It's a shame there's not more opportunities to use guys like this. Because you really need a group of enemies to make it worth doing. You can use a lot of spellcasting points. You know, it's just kind of an investment to make in a battle. Most battles don't have that many enemies, so you don't have much of a chance to use this. There's mollies again. Yeah, we heard that. So if you had a large, large group of enemies, you could cast, uh, what is it called? Hammer of Will on a large group of them, which would begin fighting each other. Maybe I'll try it in the goblin battle. That'd be pretty cool. It's getting closer, too. What is it? Here's a, uh, well, according to the game, flying demon. It's, if we, if we attack it with the bow here, I assume that hit it, but it just doesn't do much damage. So... have to attack it with magic. And I know it seems to have a thing about fire. Oh, we can hit it with fire lance. Or fire wall, that's all. See, look at all that fire damage it took from Jazara. 110 damage. That's intense. This thing is almost done. Yeah, Jazara. Jazara. Keep calling Kandark Jazara. Kandara can certainly contribute as well. This thing is vulnerable to fire. Oh, I actually can't hit it. Alright, more fire oil for you! As you can see, it's done. It's just... 
delaying because this thing can't die. I'm just discouraged or something. Oh, come on. Let's be done with it. Yeah, punch the demon. Punch the flying demon, Jazar. Yeah, punch that thing. It's leaving! We beat it! Thank the gods! I hope we don't see it again. What was it? I don't know. An abomination. It was twisted somehow. Here's a battle in which a mage can be very useful. Jaskara will cast on her first turn. Conjure Sky Warrior, which does a lot of damage by itself. 8 to 24 points per caster level. That's her first turn right there, which killed that one opponent. And now... We'll just cast Lightning Blade, which does a medium amount of damage and ignores armor. This is still Jazhara's turn. This guy with the bow, he's got problems. Observe. Jazhara did 37 damage because that was all the hit points that guy had. If he had more hit points, she would do more damage using these spells. Kandarik can also get in on that action. We're still in round one. Solon, I don't know what to do with Solon. I don't know. Let's see. Battle Blessing. There we go. Kandarik can do the same combination. He may, he may not, he may or may not cast it correctly. Get up in the inventory here. Fine. Alright, I don't have a ring for the storm now. Hopefully Kandarik does this correctly. He did, but his shot missed. So, Jashara... Yeah. And she gets two hits. James isn't even doing anything. Observe. That's, That's uh, Shift D skip the turn. And Dark will do the same. Lightning Blade. Which gives him a great range. Get away from Kandar. Get away from Jashar. His, his directed lightning strike hit the guy. The automatic Sky Warrior strike missed him. So on. This guy actually gets a chance to swing at Jashara. Long. Pretty cool. Here I'm going to show the Sky Warrior combination on a mage. We've got a whole bunch of goblins here that need to die. We'll go in here and cast Conjure Sky Warrior, which is a powerful spell in itself. And it immediately killed one goblin. Oh, 